Okay, so uh, let's get to today. You know, we are very blessed to have two gentlemen join us from GSDNL. And you know the assignment, you've done a little bit of upfront work. And I'm not going to go through an extension of um, um, uh, uh, Tom and Steven's bios. I'm going to let you tell, let them tell you about a little bit about their career and about their agency. And then we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the story of the work that they're doing behind the Air Force. So if you would, please give them a warm welcome. cacher quelque chose derrière des toilettes s'il n'y a pas de devant Exactement.
throw me a pitch, just like we're outside. Want to get away? First up, Black Keys. We open with our song in a Zales commercial. What was the name of that song? The girl's on my mind. Well, now that product is on my mind. Open over here. Now on my baby back, baby back, baby back. Now on my baby back, baby back. I can tell you by your talk. I'm sorry Betty isn't here. The holidays are made here. Right here.
not every agency does this, but we do this um, where our directors and writers work as partners. So I'm a writer and I have a, um, a new partner. Uh, and basically what you do is you kind of have your, you're both responsible for the ideas, but you also have your own little area that you work on. So I'm, I'm a writer, so I deal more like with just the words and with the, the language, language we use to get the idea out. He'll do more of the art side, more of the visuals. Um, sometimes his job is way harder than mine, um, especially if it's a really big project. Um, if you're in the creative sequence, don't be an art director. Too late? Yeah. Too late. Um, but it's uh, it's really good. And, and as far as new media goes, and I know you didn't like this, I worked, I worked in Dallas at first and then I moved to New York for 10 years. And when I was in New York, I was always hustling, trying to get that TV spot, do that TV spot. And, um, I, that was like the way you got forward. And eventually I just saw that a lot of people, a lot of the things that I thought were really cool people were sending me in emails were digital executions. There were websites and there were banner ads and things like that. And that just started kind of changed my thinking to think maybe TV's not that great anymore. And I started really hating TV spots anyway. I never watched the Super Bowl anymore because I just like, didn't enjoy it. Um, so then I moved back to Austin. I started working with Tom, right, as they were turning the corner from going a lot of TV and the Air Force. Air Force was starting to go more digital because the account side and the account team and the clients saw that the market, the target market was really much more on their computers and started, well at the time they were just on mobile phones, they didn't even have smartphones. Um, but getting away from just watching TV, a lot more Xbox, a lot more PlayStation, so it was a nice time to come in and start working on Air Force and so a lot of the work we'll see is the fruition of five or six years of a gradual change away from just TV into finding ways to use technology to get our message out to the right people at the right time. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about Air Force. So, because uh, uh, obviously it's a lot easier to understand more traditional advertising categories. I assume the vast majority of Air Force is about recruitment, right? It's yeah. all it is, yeah. Well, it's just that's, that's all it is. Your, your, your project is. So it's about recruitment. So tell me a little bit, who are you trying to target? Um, and I assume that demo's probably changed. Uh, 15 years ago, I could say males 17 to 22, and I guess today that's probably very different, or at least somewhat different. It's it's not really that different. It's, uh, you know, uh, kids, you're all kids. Uh, 16 to 24, basically, is the sweet spot. And it's uh, uh, basically, we're looking for tech tinkerer, we call them, you know, smart kids who uh, could go to college but choose not to. A lot of them may have, uh, you know, a year or two in college, but they feel like they're, you know, wasting their time. They want to get something done. So they're smart kids. Right now, just because of the economy and because of the great advertising, we have uh, the best recruits uh, of all the different services. I think it's uh, the average kid has a 97 percentile that has that uh, uh, test, which is uh, vocational and technical test that, that they take. And, uh, but it's not just about smarts, it's about uh, being active. There's certain requirements, physical requirements, which is just as tough to get. Uh, you have to be just as physical, physically fit in the Air Force as any of the other services. So we're looking for specific kids, but we're also competing in this new age with uh, Google and Facebook and technology. The Air Force, uh, the Air Force commands are air, space, and cyberspace. Uh, most people think of the Air Force as just, uh, you know, pilots. Actually, 8% of uh, the Air Force are pilots, and the rest are, you know, support. And we put up uh, more um, more satellites than NASA. We are in charge of cyberspace. So there's a lot of technical jobs. I don't know if anybody saw the went to Facebook and saw that uh, case study on the Air Force, but there is uh, it's a good cross section of the types of different the jobs there are out there. So. Um, and uh, it's, it's interesting, it's transformed about uh, six years ago, we probably did about 80% TV, 20% other. Uh, now we probably do 90% other, maybe 20% TV, because oh, 90 and 10. That <laughs> wasn't a bad thing. Um, but uh, no, we really uh, work on new media a lot just because that's what kids are. The 16 to 24 year old kids are not watching TV or they're watching it on their computer or their uh, tablet or their uh, uh, mobile. It's an interesting statistic, I think this was last year, but uh, uh, Air Force is a very uh, diverse organization. We go for broadest landscapes. So 
go for all types of uh, people. And uh, last year, I think the statistic was uh, <coughs> Hispanic youth in our target gets uh, all their, 60% of them get all their internet from their mobile device. So they have no internet at home. So mobile is obviously huge. Uh, what we have today is we're going to show you some case studies on specific projects that are uh, really technologically based. Like Stephen said, you know, we started sort of making the turn probably about three, four years ago and realizing that we needed to get a little bit more into technology. And some of the case studies we have, we've actually gone back uh, and refurbished them over the last couple of years, even though they were just a couple of years old, the technology was a little obsolete. So we have to stay current with all that. Um, yeah, I was just going to, a couple of things I want to add is that um, for every one recruit that goes into the Air Force, they have to contact 200 <coughs> people. So it takes 200 contacts, and all those 199 of them fall to the side because of way too many tattoos. You can't have sleeves in the Air Force, you can't have a Tyson on your face. Um, they, not, not enough grades, not enough physical ability, so it's really hard to find those recruits. So what we've tried to do with it's not just putting technology in there to put technology in there. It's to also find ways to pinpoint exactly those people that we, that we need to talk to. Because if we waste our time talking to 200, 199 people that are never going to make it, it's not a really efficient use of time and money for the, the recruiters. Um, the other thing is, it's nice that technology really fits in well with, with our brand, as, a, as our brand image, I think. because. The Air Force prides itself on being the most technologically advanced force, uh, military force in the world. Um, if you think about the F-22 and what they do with GPS, they invented GPS. Um, they just, they're always trying to find that new way, always on the forefront. Um, so always keeping our technology up on the forefront. And so when people interact with the Air Force, they should go away with going, holy cow, I didn't know they did that. And that was a really cool way they told me they did it. So that's, what, that's kind of the goal on all this stuff is Make it smart, make it cool, and good mess for a better job. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> so I'm curious, do they literally turn down 199? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the 200 people walk through the door, only one in 200 makes the cut. It's yeah. uh, uh, there's a six month <laughs> waiting uh, period to get it. I mean, they, they, if, even if you qualify, there's a, a they're called DEPRS and delayed entry program. It's like six months before you find out what, uh, what you do. Is the Army, Navy, and Marines as Particular? No, uh, they're well, not that they're not particular, but it's uh, it's criteria. It's very yeah. different. We're, it's totally different targets. Well, the, the Air Force is, yeah, they get the nickname from the other branches as the Chair Force because they, you know, they don't, they, even though they have special ops, which are just badass as SEALs, they don't, the majority of Sydney, they have big artillery. I was, we were at the Pentagon one time and we were talking to the chief of staff of the Air Force and he was saying, you know, we, we're a little smarter. We like to sit back and send our bombers in. We don't like to get down there. We, we want to kill them before they kill us. So uh, they're a little smarter that way, even though they, the other services think they are softer. But so, like Marine, if you want to be a Marine, which is great, Ed, that is more of we want you when you're 18 to 25 because we want you a warrior. We want to hand to hand guy. We, after that, they're, you know, we, we're not looking for people after that. And Army is, uh, is Great too, but they are more on the front lines than Air Force is, and their deployments are longer. So their recruitment is a little bit more, a lot more difficult. So, so do you want to show us some videos and show us some of the actual work that you guys are doing, and then tie it back to how it, this all maps with your digital strategy? Sure. Absolutely. First, the first project is a couple years old. You may have seen it, but it was a coordinated campaign, which really epitomizes the strategy that we're trying to push forward, which is. At the Air Force, we do the impossible every day. Uh, people don't realize how, uh, you know, when they find out what some of the airmen do, they're like, wow, I didn't think that was possible. It seems very futuristic. So there's a coordinated campaign with TV, banners, uh, uh, experiential, mobile, all types of uh, different media, which uh, kind of shows you uh, an overall view of the strategy. And then uh, we'll go into specific different projects, which are more technologically based.
To elevate the perception of the Air Force as the most technologically advanced branch of the U.S. military, a multimedia, multi-experiential advertising campaign was launched. Sir, debris heading towards our comm satellite. Impact may cut off communications with ground forces. Launch avoidance maneuver. Twenty kilometers in closing.
funny thing about supercar is, again, we had this beat up tour that was going around to car events, but they're doing drifting and there's you know booth bays at NOS and NOS girls and all these kind of things and people with really souped up cars. And we went in there going, we got an old beat up F16 that people kind of come take a picture next to and then walk away. They don't engage at all. So we got to do something cool. So our original concept was we wanted to strap an F16 engine to a car, but they wouldn't give us an engine. So we had to figure out something new. Well, it's, it, again, so much of what you do, and I have a question about your target. So much of what you do looks like boys, toys, adventure stuff. So the question, the first question is, uh, uh, what's the recruitment mix look like, male, female? Because I assume it's still predominantly male. It's, pre it's predominantly male, and in all services, it's going down right now. It's uh, right now it's uh, about twenty percent women and eighty percent men. So in Air Force as well. The, in Air Force, the others are a lot lower. Okay. So we're there's a concerted effort. We actually did uh, this thing called the TV spot. And uh, last year, it was about women in the Air Force, and they're they're badass. One was a firefighter, one was a doctor, one was a lawyer, one was a uh, F twenty, actually F sixteen uh, pilot. But uh, yeah, and so women, we it's it's better than all the rest of them, but it's not as high. The female wing commander just got commissioned in the Air Force, and she's UT grad. Oh, well, there you go. Very cool. They have the, they have the first uh, four star general. General Wolfenbarger. Uh, Ms. Ms. General Ms. 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 Excuse me. Yes. Sorry, uh, Pino. Whatever you want. Yes. One, one thing to be clear about, though, one, to be clear on all this stuff is like, especially Supercar, we're not going after like just kids that like to mess with cars. I mean, we're really looking for people that are in tech, trade school because if you think of it this way, you go to a trade school like IPT or something, you want to work on cars, you want to do an air conditioning or whatever that is. You're going to spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars on your education anyway. You go here and you get it for free. You get it for free, and you get to go around the world. And you, you know, it's a, it's a good, it's a pretty good deal. I wish I had kind of known about it back then. I might have taken a different path. But well, well, the other thing is like going on these shoots. I've met a lot of recruits that are going from tech school or which is where they learn their trade. Um, a lot of them are college dropouts, and it was not because they were bad at college because they got bored with college or they ran out of money. Yep. So many of them just run out of money like, I got I want to finish school. I had two college roommates who went to service because they ran out of good grades. <laughs> 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 Parents were done and, and you know what, uh, five years in the Marine Corps got them on the straight and narrow. There's, um, there, there's two paths to uh, go to the Air Force. There's the enlisted, which is mainly what we do, but there's also officer. And officer, you need a college degree, so you guys can still get in the Air Force. And you can go come in as an officer if you have a degree. And, or you can go to the academy, which is elite school like uh, Harvard, Yale, you know, or UT. Well, one of my graduate assistants was an Air Force grad. He didn't come back to school. Oh, I need to ask, do we have anybody from the services here? Any ROTC? Anybody? Okay. Well, we're going to thank you for your service and give you an automatic A. Um, <laughs> uh, should I play the last one? Yeah. This one good too. So I'll just set this up real quick. This is our newest endeavor. It's not. It's not a mobile tour. It's a. Um, video. Game. It's a video game. Okay. Everyone knows the United States Air Force has pilots, planes, and mechanics. The problem is, it's all they know. They don't know about our careers in special operations, space command, intelligence, and more. So how do you let potential recruits that spend every waking moment playing video games know what the Air Force offers? You make a video game. Airman Challenge puts users in command as they handpick teams to accomplish missions the Air Force undertakes every day. They have to learn what each career field does and doesn't do because sending in the wrong team leads to mission failure. With their team of airmen selected, users go on missions that have them fighting in Afghanistan, providing humanitarian relief in Bolivia, fending off cyber attacks in the States, and more. As users complete missions and gain experience, they're rewarded with rank, achievements, and exclusive downloads Facebook integration not only encourages sharing with friends, but challenging them as well. Airman Challenge is a thinking person's game that's as intellectually challenging as it is entertaining. Playing it just one time means learning something new about the Air Force. 
and that opens the door to one more potential recruit. Airman Challenge, only the best will make it. Will you? Okay, so question, is Airman Challenge in the game really just an extension more of the same, a cool environment to collect people who are more predisposed to this interest level, or is it even more, uh, can I get conspiracy theorists, are some of the games tied to actual skill sets? Are you actually looking for people who have... Yeah, it's not last Starfighter. Okay. <laughs> Nobody knows that. Okay, but it's pretty. It's uh, there's no um, there's nothing in the gaming metrics itself that's intended no. to identify. We didn't go that deep. Okay, I mean, that, that's actually a pretty good idea. But it's really it's more of an education. Of, there are so many different roles. There's so many different roles in the Air Force, and it explains the jobs. And they're not all pilots. I mean, that's the, the biggest misconception. Yes, people. What does the Navy do? Oh, boats. Marines. Oh, they're underground. <coughs> Air Force. They fly planes. And so this shows all the different ones. It's really about education. But that's a good idea. The, the interesting thing about Airman Challenge, though, is we do have a lot of data capture. But what's interesting, because we, we, we're not allowed to cookie, <laughs> but when you opt in to play the game, we have to be able to cookie you. So that's part of the terms and conditions. So we have to be able to cookie you to keep, your, keep track of your progress as you go through all the missions. And what, what we are able to see is where are most people going after they play the game? Are they going away from the site completely, or are they going back to the main .com site and digging into careers or lifestyle or what's basic training like? And, and so that's been a really helpful tool, and we're going to keep honing it um, to get to, to mine that data and make the, our other site the, the even better and more useful for people. So that's really what we're trying to do: is finding good ways to tell our story. Because when we tell our story well, people tend to like it. And so. Um, so far, Airman Challenge has about 500,000 players in four months, or visitors in four months. Um, about a fifth of those actually play, and a fifth again of those register, and then 12% complete the creation, which is about a, there's about a 30 minute time uh, minute engagement time on that game right now, which is insanely hot. It's very good. Talk about the enhancements too, and the learning that's going back. Oh, so it, what's nice about it is because we can, you know, you were saying earlier, everything is measured. So we can measure, you know, we don't measure individuals, we measure in mass using Google Analytics mostly when it works. Um, but we can see, like on Mission 4, we notice that a lot of people were dropping off. And that they get all the way to Mission 4 and then just stop. And we went back and looked at it, and Mission 4 was a little hard to play. Even, you know, I, Designed it, I wrote it, I, I knew what to do, I knew, how to, I knew the trick, you know, how to beat the boss. And I still had a hard time with it, so we tweaked it a little bit and made it a little, a little easier, but still challenging, and boom. Opened up the floodgates and people were getting to Mission 11. Mission 11 is too hard, what are we going to do? So we tweaked that a little bit. We're, how do we boost our registration? How do we get people to use more Facebook Connect? So we took our registration process, was one big page where you, you wrote everything in at once. You know, your name, your email, all that. And then we broke it into three little pages. Boom. Easier. People like three little pages. Same amount of information you have to give, but smaller doses. More to, more to your point, Tom, about analytics and metrics. I mean, everything is being driven off of, off of data, right? And, and the world that we started in, in this business, was not very analytical. Uh, but we, we enjoyed the luxury of, of selling in an environment, our services, where um, our, our Qualitative results were many times subjective, uh, based on the eye and opinion of a client, or feedback on the street, or good direct response. It could also be a measurement that said we're doing a good job. But today, so much of that is data driven, and I think for the business, it's a little double-edged sword because you don't get the response you want. You can be called a project. But the flip side is that that real-time the data feed, those metrics allow you to continue to customize and fine-tune and improve what you're doing in a way that wasn't possible. You know five years ago, seven years ago. And is it everything, do you, you see, do you see other accounts in the agency and in your business going the way of the Air Force? Uh, yes and no. We have a unique, uh, a very, a unique uh, situation with uh, the Air Force because we do everything for them. We do their truck tour, we do their Facebook, we do their advertising, we do everything because they don't have a marketing department and they're the best, they're one of the best clients in the world and because we, uh, we have these generals that uh, switch out every three years, and they're not marketing directors who are like, you know, I want to make a name for myself, I want to do it my way. They know nothing about marketing. They just came from 
uh, services, or they just came from client to client. They, 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 they respect uh, the, the profession of advertising, and the, that we know what we're doing because we've been successful. And one of the clients, uh, Mr. Hansen, who used to be Colonel Hansen, and then he became Mr. Hansen, and he works in the same position. Uh, they, have, do, they have like uh, an enlisted person and then a uh, civilian, oversight. civilian oversight because the civilian will always stay there. The uh, <coughs> person in the Air Force will have to leave after three years. But Mr. Hansen actually said, you know, I really don't like this idea. I think it's been, I'm not the target and you guys know best. And that, from a client, you never get that. So. Is that the nature of having a government entity as a client that doesn't have a marketing department, or do you need to? I don't think it's government. I, I, yeah, I don't think it's government. I think it's more the you know I think the it's hierarchy. The they have there. I, I have friends that work on the army account, and they say it's really, okay. it's really not the, the same at all. Okay, so it's not just the nature that it's not a commercial client like a package <laughs> service company that has a huge marketing department and a CEO and a chief marketing officer who have their strong opinions. It's it is truly unique. I think I think the personnel that are there really make a difference. They really are nice people, smart people, uh, and I do think that it's the hierarchy of command from the general down. It's like whatever he says goes, you know. And if the guy on top isn't going to meddle very much, it's interesting. The, the last general that oversaw AFRS, which is Air Force Recruiting Services, was, was an egghead, and he pushed us. He wanted us to get into social, but his brother-in-law was uh, a digital uh, strategist at uh, RGA. So we know that our stuff was, you know, he was running that by it. But one, one thing too I just want to talk about is, you know, uh, all the stuff we do, we don't do everything at gst &M. We hire different technological companies uh, to do some of the hardware, some of the programming and whatnot. The model for most agencies is to bring it all in-house and we have a certain amount of uh, programming, program, programming capability, but to the whole, we can kind of you know, source it out. Uh, Airman Challenge is a good sort of balance between the two because Stephen wrote the whole story and Cheyenne, his uh, designer partner, uh, kind of designed and pushed the design, but all the back-end stuff was a uh, vendor partner. The continuity between the game uh, created and the television commercials? Uh, no. Not really? No. Because, by the way, I think the spots are just incredibly badass. Yeah. I mean, they're just really just beautiful. And, um, you know, I remember the first one I saw was just, it had the look and feel <laughs> of a highly produced 3D animated feature film trailer coming on. And it was just kind of wow. Will you guys stick around and let a few people talk yeah. to you? That was very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.